So, hey, hi, good evening, everyone. So I'm I'm Kai Wen. So I'm I'm an intern in the data and AI team in Singapore Power. So for the past for, for the past three months of my internship, I have been part of the efficiency. I've been part of the operation efficiency team, and in the data and AI team. So the project that I've been working on is on utilities on residential movement detection using utilities consumption data and machine learning. So this project is part of a larger project which improves the efficiency of metering to billing operations for SP services. So here's a brief introduction to my project. So electricity meter readings are read by meter readers and sent to the server and uploaded to the server in SP once every two months. Once uploaded, these readings will, will be checked against the system of rules. If the meter reading is too high, it might be caused by a faulty meter. And because of that, technicians need to be sent to the premises to do on-site investigation. But there are many times when whereby the whereby the meter is read by the Meter readings are due to someone moving into the premise, so the meter is not faulty. And this means that the trip is wasted because it incurs manpower and other costs. So my project is to build a predictive machine learning model to detect these new moving events. By integrating this model into the daily operational flow of a meter irregularity investigation, this can help the operations team to identify if to identify if the meter is due to a new move-in and this will reduce the false positives. The, uh, the technologies and tools that I have used, for, these are the technologies and tools that I have used. So for writing my project, I have used Python and Jupyter Notebook. And for, and I have used Jupyter uh, and what? I have used Scikit-learn and SGBoost for creating, for, for creating my models and training and evaluating and then comparing to see which one is better. And these are the steps that I took in my project execution. First, I do data collection and processing. Next, I do feature engineering. Then I do model training, model evaluation, and lastly, model comparison. So here's a walkthrough of the code in my Jupyter Notebook. So for the first phase of data collection and process, so the first phase of my project is data collection and processing. In this phase, I collect the notification account and billing data. And then I process this data to allow for easy engineering of features for, for each notification. So let me tell you more about, about the download file. So the download file it actually contains the notifications that are triggered by the system of rules. So these are the fields in the download file. The device column refers to the meter that is associated to the notification that is being triggered. The div column here refers to the rise in a specific utility that caused the notification to be triggered, whether it is electricity, water, or gas. The contract account refers to the account that was to the account number that is being associated to the meter. The date issued column refers to the date then which the notification was triggered, and the cost code description refers to the to the reason why the notification was triggered. So now the upload file actually contains the result after the meters that have, that are associated to the notifications have been investigated. So now let me explain to you about the fields of the upload file. So the control reading column shown here, it refers to the reading that was taken by the technicians after they was after they have investigated the meter associated to the notification. So with these with these two files, I then proceed to merge them together based on the based on the notification. 
because this will because from there I can see like which the, about the notification and why the notification was being triggered. So after merging these two files together, I extracted the high consumption notifications by the cost code description to define it as being triggered due to high consumption. After, after that, I also like extract based on the column div, which is 0, 01, because 0, 01 means that it's being triggered by electricity, triggered by a rise in electricity. After extracting the notifications based on these two conditions, I then join these notifications to the account moving information. And from there, I, I actually like derive the how long the account has been open since it was first moved in, since it was first opened, till the date when the notification was triggered. After that, I obtained the six consecutive previous months starting from the date when the notification, starting from the month the notification was triggered. Then I collect the billing data. The billing data contains the amount of electricity, water, and gas that was consumed for specific periods pertaining to a particular account. Then I join the notifications to the postcode. The pre the pre the premise where the where the account was open, as well as utility statistical information. I further extract the notifications by, speci by specifying the account type to be DOM because my project is on residential is on detecting residential moving events. The so I DOM for domestic, right? Yeah. So the last part, label generation. I, I generate a label to specify whether the notification is triggered by new move-ins. So. The algorithm for doing it is if the written remarks column in the data set has the words newly moved in or new move in, I return a 1. So the 1 means that the notification is triggered by new move in. If the written remarks do not contain these, these words, I, I return a 0 to say that it is not triggered by new move in. So here are some of the, some of the notifications and their written remarks. So as you can see here, because these written remarks don't contain the words new move-in, I label a zero. And those written remarks with new move-in, I label a one. In the second phase of feature engineering, I derive features from the process data set for my machine learning model. So let me tell you, uh, let me tell you a few of the features that I've generated. The first feature that I that I generated was was the ratio of electricity usage for the latest month. So this, I feel that this feature is useful because this allows my machine learning model to learn the relationship between the electricity usage and the water usage as well as the gas usage. If I feel that similar usage patterns among electricity, water, and gas means that there is a high possibility that the notification is being triggered by new move-in. So here are the consumption here are the consumption ratios for the various notifications. <coughs> and another feature that I engineered was the number of notifications being triggered. Because which is over here. I feel that this is this feature is useful because a uh, high because a uh, high no number of notifications generated for the same postcode within a specific period could imply that the housing flat is new and this leads to a high number of new moving cases. Uh, therefore, the high number of the notification with the postcode that has many notifications triggered for the past 10, 20, and 30 days means that is more likely to be triggered by a new move-in. So here are some of the notifications, their written remarks, and the labels, and the number of notifications for the past 10 days. 
Now the next phase of my project is on model training. So in this phase, I train two machine learning models, which are logistic regression and extreme gradient boosting, which is XGBoost. Before, before actually training my models, I prepared my data that can be used for model training. So these are the steps that I took. First, I, I extracted labels without any without a value because without because without the label we cannot do the the model is not able to learn. Then I also I also filtered out all the columns whereby there is no there is no consumption for the latest month. Because it is important to know to know that because it is important that there is actually consumption for the latest month so I can tell whether it is triggered by a new move-in. Then I define the indexes to be used for the training and test testing. I then remove all the all the other fields that are not features and only retain the and only retain the features and the label for each notification. Place the NAN and infinity values with, uh, because this because the model is because I cannot fit a data set with these values into uh, into the logistic regression model. After and after making sure that my data can be used for training, I then split the data set into the training and test set. So now I'm training the first model that I train is a logistic regression model. So I obtain the I perform cross validation. I train my model by performing cross validation and then obtaining the most optimal hyperparameter value for, for my model. This is the most optimal hyperparameter value and its, and its accuracy. The second model that I trained is the XGBoost. Again, I perform cross-validation and here are the, here are the par parameters that I tested with. After performing the cross-validation, I obtained that I obtained the high, the most optimal hyperparameter value, which is here, which is this. <coughs> the final phase of my of the project is on model evaluation. In in this in this phase, I I I use the trained model to actually make predictions on the test set. And here are the performance. Uh, and here is the performance of both models. After after evaluating both models, I proceeded to to compare both models. I so what I did was that I for the logistic regression model, I changed the decision boundary for the new movie classification so that so that the logistic regression and the XGBoost model will have the same accuracy in predicting new move-in. So in conclusion, I use the logistic regression model as the baseline model for training and evaluating my model because the project that I need that I'm working on needs a binary classification algorithm to be implemented. Mm, but the logistic regression model that I created was not able to predict non-moving very accurately. This can be seen from its confusion metrics where it predicted only seven where it managed to classify only 75 out of 260. 60 non-moving cases. Because of that I explored another model to to I explored another model to use to reduce the number of non-moving cases being misclassified being misclassified. And by creating the HD boost model, the it has reduced the number of non-moving cases being misclassified because it only misclassified 14. So because there is a big there is a big jump in the number of cases that are being misclassified, I decided to choose the, the XGBoost over the logistic regression. So 
So here is so the by integrating this predictive model into the operational flow, we can bring about the following values. Firstly, reduction in the cost of operations. Meter irregularity investigations are expensive due to high manpower and other costs. If a high meter reading is identified to be because of a new move-in, this can this will eliminate the need for sending a technician on site. Secondly, more efficient use of resources. By reducing the number of false positives, the operations team will have more time, more manpower and time to focus on the real faulty meter and meter temporary cases. This means that the operations team will have more time to focus to deal. The, this means that the operations team will be more efficient in dealing with the true cases. Thirdly, better customer service. An on-site investigation can sometimes involve the customer's presence, especially if the meters are in a private area. This causes inconvenience to the customers to schedule for a time when he or she is available to be around. Reducing the number of on-site investigations improves overall customer service. Lastly, reduction in safety risk. Reducing the need for an on-site investigation will improve the safety of the technicians overall. As safety is an important priority for SP, this is also an important benefit for the company. However, I feel that the following improvements can be made to further improve the model that I built. First, firstly, I should retrieve the actual electricity consumption instead of the estimated ones. Because when, during the execution of my project, as a result of, of including the estimated consumption data in the feature engineering phase, I realized that for certain notifications, there was actually no significant rise in electricity consumption for the two, for the two months nearest to the, to the notification date. And because of that, it caused downstream problems because I was not able to further derive useful features using these values. The second improvement that I can make is to use the document date closest to the notification date and to use the bill period associated to that notification date as the latest month. In the data collection and processing phase, I made a mistake when transforming the newly merged data set. I want, yeah, because in this phase, I wanted to obtain the six consecutive previous months so I can generate further features from the, on the utilities consumption for these months. Last but not least, for each model, I, I should tr actually train the model that I obtained from cost validation on the entire training set for the models that I've used. Of course, in the model training phase, I miss out that step and jump into model evaluation straight away. And this caused downstream problems as it affected the accuracy of the models during the evaluation process. So I feel that in conclusion, with these improvements that I implement, I can make my model become more accurate in predicting non -move, new moving cases. Okay, thank you. How, how, how long do you spend working on this uh, SP? Mm, in this project specifically? Yeah, this, this project specifically. I spent, I spent 12 weeks working on it. Just 12 weeks? Yeah. Wow. So quite a lot, quite a big achievement in 12 weeks. Yeah. yeah. And uh, before you came to SP, you never actually did this before, right? as in use Jupyter Notebook or anything. Have you, have you used those before you came for the internship? Uh, no. No. Yeah. So you also learned all this during the. 12 weeks and doing an internship. Uh. Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah, it's quite quite achievement, isn't it, guys? So, uh, that hands to uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So,